Today, um, I thought I'd share a little bit about um, what RSI has just published, uh, their third qu quarter market report. Um, some of you uh, heard some of this the other day at their presentation, but uh, thank thanks to them, they're allowing us to uh, share it with you today. The, um, the market um, in, res in residential land right now is basically at an all, almost at an all-time uh, shortage. There's, if, as you see the graph right there, the historic norm normal range in the U.S. is between 1 million and 1.3 million starts. Right now, we're hovering around 800,000 starts, 890,000 starts. Um, Single-family detached is expected to climb, and that, that is both multifamily and single-family, excuse me. Single-family detached is expect, expected to climb about uh, to about 600,000 starts. And the government shutdown really um, prevented them from having the latest stats, so that's as good as we've got for right now. Um, as you can see by this chart, this is the U.S. and the Dallas-Fort Worth new home starts on the same chart. Uh, the U.S. are the blue dots, and DFW are the, the lines. You can see that uh, the U.S. had 628,000 starts, and DFW 20,000 starts. Um, this, uh, if you compare this to roughly 2005-2006, we were at about 60,000 starts. So we're at about one-third of where we were at the height of the market before the crash. This chart shows the house prices um, and the trends um, based on the Case-Shiller Index in Dallas. Uh, as you can see, and you probably read this morning in the paper, prices are, are continually to go, continuing to go up. We're up about 10% over this time last year, which is a little bit lower than we were the year over year, the year before, but still very good. The composite, the, one, the chart on the right shows the composite 20 city index versus Dallas, and you can see that Dallas is up a, a little under 10 percent. The 20 city, city index is up a little over 10 percent. Here, these charts show the different types of markets for the different types of housing. The A markets would be your 10 to 2 uh, on the clock, North Dallas, Frisco, Plano, uh, Prosper, McKinney, Allen type markets. Uh, your B markets, and those, those are hovering about $125 a square foot right now in Dallas-Fort Worth. The B markets would, are the ones that are beginning to emerge right now. Those are around $95 a square foot, and the Cs are up to about $82 a square foot. The Cs, there's still uh, a few busted deals out there in the C markets. Uh, those are getting absorbed quite rapidly. So, um, I think there, there probably is a little, it's a little bit sleepy in the C, but I think there's opportunity in the Bs. If you look at the chart on the right, that, tra that will translate to, um, to a house price on a 3,200 square foot house. So if you uh, translate the 125 to a house price, you're at 400. Are we on the same chart? I'm sorry. Y'all tell me if I do that. I've got to control two of these up here, <laughs> and I can't see it. This is the uh, per square foot on the left, translating into a 3,200 square foot house in the right. So you'd average price would be about 400,000 for the A's, about 300,000 for the B's, and about 260 for the C's. One of the things that has caused a little bit of a slippage in um, the housing market uh, over the summer was we had a little tick up in mortgage rates. I'm sure you uh, remember uh, we were up about 100 basis points from the lows in the spring. And um, uh, it's, we've dropped back down a little bit. Um, the average <coughs> mortgage rate on a 30-year mortgage today is about 4.1%, about 3.2 on a 15-year mortgage. One-year arms are at 2.6. So what this really a actually did, uh, and it was, I believe, a temporary um, issue, was create a double whammy 
with housing price escalations and costs going up and mortgage rates going up, and so we had a temporary, a little bit of a decline in volume. Again, the, the colored lines, um, the, that would be the A market would be the blue lines, the B market would be the red line, and the C market would be the yellow line. This chart shows the national existing sales for existing single family homes on the left. Um, it's an interesting um, phenomena. If you look at the middle of the chart, you see where um, you, you had a pickup in sales around um, January April, through April of 2010, and then you had the immediate drop off in July. You see right here? That was the, uh, the temporary fix that the government um, came up with to, um, to try to push buyers into the market. Um, if you look long term, it really didn't do much. It, it's broadly gone up, but it, it pushed it up and then it stopped it, and now it, we're trending back to about where we would have been in the first place. Um, the, the second chart on the right is existing homes only. And this one is very interesting also, and this, this is basically uh, what the paper said this morning. Equilibrium is considered to be a six-month supply. If, if you're over six months, uh, you're going to see slippage in price. If you're under six months, you're going to see escalation in price. As, as you can see right here, the gap between the red line and this line here, we are under a six-month supply. That's very good for the market going forward. This chart shows pending sales for September and higher prices and mortgage rates. Um, month over month, we're down about 5% versus last, last month, and we're down about 1.2% from a year ago, but we're still very good. The U.S. average is 101.6, and we are at 100, a little, a little under 102. This chart here shows our re Dallas resales market, sales continuing to climb with inventory remaining tight. Basically, it's just like the chart before, but this is just a, a little bit set of numbers. Equilibrium line is the black line right there, and the annual resales are the blue lines right here. And the red line is our month's supply of listings. So you can see that we are under six, under three months supply of listings right now, right here. This chart shows the listing inventory. And basically, it's the same chart as before, it's just a different picture of it. We're at about a 2.5 month supply of listings, 23,955 listings as of September 2013. The, this chart on the left shows new listings, and, and they have ticked up a little bit, as you can see. And the days on the market, and this, this actually is, is, tells a, a pretty good story. Days on the market is, is how long does it take to sell a house? And as you can see, you know, when it was a little bit slower, it took a long time, a lot longer to sell that house. Now it's dropped down to, it's almost a record low. Even though it's, the days have gone up just a little bit, that's just a, a temp, I th we think that's just a temporary issue. We're at about 59 days, and we were at 100 days not very long ago. So about half as long to sell that house. This chart shows the quarter to quarter growth in real gross domestic product. The one on the upper left. As you can see, um, you know, starting in 09, back here, when we were basically losing 5%, over 5% growth, we've basically done pretty good. Right here in the yellow line is where we are today, a little over 2%. Um, I, would, I would describe that as a sleepy growth, not a robust growth. Certainly not good enough to employ up the country again. but. Um, 
and and the projection is the forecast is that it's going to be basically more of the same. However, in Dallas, we're doing a little bit better than that. But before I do that, I wanted to. They did bring up this issue. Uh, they uh, ex they described her as a dove, which means probably more of the same quantitative easing. She's not going to tighten things up too much. Okay, let's let's uh, drill down into the Texas economy. Uh, right now, you've probably um, heard we've created about 258,000 new jobs in Texas. We're at a 2.37 growth rate, and we have 11 million employed. Uh, as compared to the United States, at a little, what did I say, over 2%, I meant under 2%, 1.66, we're running ahead um, of, of the United States, and we uh, accounted for 11.6% of all job growth in the United States. If you drill down even further, in Dallas, uh, we had over 111,000 jobs created over the last 12 months through August. Houston, 80. Austin, 23. And San, San Antonio, 7,800. So that bodes good for us. This chart shows the DFW annual employment growth rate. Um, still at 3.67 percent at the end and 111,000 jobs, but you can see how we dipped below the zero line uh, pretty significant, significantly a couple of years ago, and we've trended back strongly since. I think the trough was we lost 134,000 jobs right, right there, and that was in 2010. This is the unemployment rate. Right now we're at 6 percent in Dallas. The U.S. is at 7.3 and Texas is at 6.3. I want to remind you uh, also that um, these numbers were not available in September, uh, so this is through August due to the government shutdown. Oh, th this chart um, is pretty interesting. This basically is break, will break out where the stronger growth is. If you see in, in mining, logging, construction, we're at 5.5 percent here. Um, I would say that a lot of that is attributable to residential home construction. Another strong um, activity is, is in financial activities. We're at up almost 6% and 6.5% in professional and business services. So those sectors are, are doing pretty well here. This, this one um, talks about builder confidence and Bruce is here and he might be able to speak to this uh, Bruce French with History Maker Homes is here. He might be able to speak to this a little bit later. But uh, Builder Conference has, has moderated slightly in September. It's down 3% since August, which was a high. However, they they're continuing to react to higher prices and mortgage rates, but the, but the uh, index is good at 58%. Expectations over the next six months, um, will they, they expect to go up a little bit, up into the 60s. And the traffic component, which is one of the things they look at, was down a little bit to 44 reading from a 46 in September, but still good. And this uh, was RSI's top 10 list, and I thought this was pretty interesting. I wanted to share it with you. DFW will adjust to higher mortgage rates by next spring. This is what they're saying. Job growth, housing demand will remain intact in 2014, and another 80,000 to 80 to 100,000 jobs will be created next year. That's all very good for residential real estate and new home construction demand. While home prices are up a little bit, about 5%, and 30-year mortgage rates are up a little bit, they're still very affordable in the fours. Um, another factor is um, apartment rents are up five, over 5%, five as Brad can tell you. He's our multifamily person in the room. And the concessions are down, which makes the cost of an apartment a little more expensive. Um, they believe that will, that will push more buyers into the single family market next year. They also said something very interesting. 
they felt like this was a transition year, very similar to the year 93-94. For those of you that remember 93-94, uh, that preceded a, a, a very large growth time, um, you know, in the mid-90s. We were a little bit in recession, but, you know, not fully in recession. So uh, that, that is encouraging for next year. Their number two on the top ten list was that their lot, the lot supply in DFW will be returning towards equilibrium. Right now we're at a 24.5 months supply of lots. 24 is considered equilibrium, a two-year supply. Six months on inventory, 24 months on lot supply. We're just a little bit over that. They expect things to tighten up a little bit next year. Um, it's more difficult to get lots on the ground. Um, and then even though there are a lot of new uh, projects, you know, in the pipeline, uh, lot deliveries will be about four to 5,000 units in 2014, and demand should exceed that. At the end of the year, they expect just under, under equilibrium at about a 23 months supply of lots. Number three uh, is very interesting for me because one of the um, areas in the market where I'm actually actively looking for projects is in the B area because I think that market is beginning to emerge. They agree. They say that uh, B, the B and even the C markets will begin to open up and reawaken in 2014. They're projecting annual starts in the B of 6,000 starts and 3,800 starts in the C's. Oh, excuse me, that was 2012. They're projecting up 19% growth since 2000, over 2000, 2013. I'm going to get this right. 2013 was up 19% over 2012 for the B's and the C's was up 30%. They're expecting that trend to continue. Could you define the B and the C? I, I did already um, in an earlier slide. The B was the, um, the, in the price point where we were saying per square foot, um, at the A market was about, about $125 a square foot, an average or about a $400,000 house, median house price. The B was at about 100 uh, or about a $300,000 house price, remember on the 3,200 square foot home. And then the, um, the C was at 265 and 85. Good question. Thank you. Okay, their number four on their list is the ratio of job growth to housing starts. And they believe that it will remain above the historic norm. Um, and they define that as over the past 25 years in DFW, there's been 1.26 new jobs created and 666,000 starts. That's a ratio of 1.9 to 1. The average, the at annual average is about 51,000. So if you do the math, right now through the third quarter, there's been 111,000 new jobs and 20,000 starts. That's a ratio of 5.3 to 1, right here. Look at your average over the last 20 years, 25 years, to your current. So they say that that's boding well for 2014. The 2014, they think that ratio is going to remain in the fours. Their number five top issue was construction capacity. And this, is, this has been an issue all over the state. Um, it's, it's very hard to find labor right now. Vendors are thin. Uh, but they think there's more jobs that are going to come into the construction market and begin to loosen that up. That should help uh, not only with, with pricing, but it also should help with capacity. Their number six is that builders right now have sold a lot of their spec inventory and they will build that back up in 2014. Number seven is uh, builder margins will not be as robust in 14. They think that uh, 213 was a 
2013 was a very good year for margins. Uh, things are gonna get a little more competitive, but still very good. We're at number eight. Um, ranks independent developers will grow despite continued high requirements of equity. Um, this is for a couple of reasons. Um, some of the national builders are beginning to re, uh, de deploy resources in some of the more emerging markets that got hammered a little harder than we did here in DFW. Um, also, and so therefore they, they use independent developers like us uh, to replenish their lot supplies. Um, also, um, as Bruce just mentioned, um, challenges with entitlement um, make it more um, efficient for them to use a third-party developer. And, and then the third thing is that we, we can provide off-balance sheet financing for them uh, as we will finance the lots and develop the lots on our balance sheet and contract them, uh, sell them to them. This chart right here shows for independent developers um, the last uh, several years, 2005 to 2013. As you can see in 2005, we were de delivering 56,000 lots to builders and that trailed off and basically almost stopped in the trough into just a few thousand lots. And now we're back up to about 19,000 expected for 2014. The second line is, is also very interesting. As you can see, there was 280 independent developers out there in the mid-2000s, and that shrank down to just a few, actually 42 in 2010. And now there's 100 developers are, are, have come back into the market and are getting back in the game. Uh, the third chart is development activity uh, in 2005 by the builders. Uh, so about a third of their lots were being developed, they were developing themselves. About two thirds they were using independent developers to supply their lots. Um, that dropped down to about 11% in 2009 and that was probably a handful of projects, you know, in the Frisco market, basically, uh, I would guess. Uh, right now, because of high equity re requirements, um, a little under half their lots they're having to develop themselves. Number nine, and I think I just mentioned this um, a minute ago, but the public builders, the majors, um, will have a higher appetite for option lots, and um, that is because they're, they're going to be looking for other markets to deploy resources, uh, which bodes well for independent developers. And 10, lot price appreciation, they believe will moderate, moderate a little bit to a more historic historical rate. This chart shows the new home market vital signs. Um, as you can see uh, right now we're at about 4.4 billion dollars in starts today in Dallas and about 1.8 billion in Fort Worth. In the total market we're just a little over six billion. The average home price in Dallas is about two hundred eighty eighty thousand dollars. 226 in Fort Worth and about 260 in the, the entire marketplace. We had 14,000 starts, 14,533 to be exact, in Dallas, and about 6,200 starts in Fort Worth for a total of about 21,000 starts. Annual closings, um, the difference between starts and closings obviously is an occupied house versus a spec, uh, a house to, that's being built for a, a sale. Uh, at about 13,000 in Dallas, 6,000 in Fort Worth, and 18,000 for the total market. Right now we have finished vacants on the ground of about 1,850 units in Dallas, 851 units in Fort Worth, 2,700 in the total market. That equates to a 1.7 month supply of inventory in Dallas, a 1.8 in Fort Worth, and at 1.7 overall. This, this is um, very good for um, the supply siders. Under construction, if you add the under construction housing, there's 5,300 units in Dallas under construction, 2,200 in Fort Worth, 7,600 in the total marketplace. So if you translate that into the total month supply, remember I, I said that six months 
is considered to be equilibrium. We're at five months in Dallas, 4.6 months in Fort Worth, 4.9 months overall. Our current inventory of vacant developed lots, those are lots that are, can, you can put a house on today. 34,632 vacant lots in Dallas, 17,800 lots in Fort Worth, 52,000 total. That equates to a month's supply of lots of 28 months in Dallas, 33 months in Fort Worth, and 30 months overall. And remember I said equilibrium is considered to be 24 months for your vacant lot supply. So we're a little over equilibrium, but they, remember I showed you in the previous slide, they expect that to tighten up and, and be below equilibrium next year. This chart compares starts in Dallas with closing and lot deliveries. The um, checkered line, the yellow line, is the annual start rate, and the red line is the closing rate so you can see that we're starting just a little over what we're closing. It's very healthy. And then your lot deliveries are the blue line right here. 